the Fighting Irish play like a champion today. No name with its first title in men's lacrosse. What's the vision for the 2024 season? I don't think about it that way. I mean, I you know, honestly, the vision is for today. Let's let's try to have a good practice and get better. I mean, you know, I, whatever we're capable of doing will happen if if we worry about what's going on right now and what our process is today. Simply just get better every day. We're simply trying to strive to be the best version of ourselves and, and that's as men, character and, and the best team that we can be. So it's, it's simply the pathway is a little bit better today than we were yesterday, a little bit better tomorrow than we were today. So do as best as we can do. That's a lofty goal and you know, coming off of last year's success. So, you know, we got to be our version, our best versions of ourselves. You know, I know everybody's going to anticipate a, a good season and that I hope we do. We put our best foot forward. Hey, come in. What's been the mindset coming in uh, to the 2024 season? We gotta have the same mindset that we did last year. Just like that hungry mentality overall, for sure. This is a new team. That team graduated, that team that did what we did is non-existent anymore. We need to just prepare ourselves to be a championship caliber team. We need to be the best we can be come February. Beautiful day in South Bend. The Gold Domes are on and the Fighting Irish are out on Arlotta Stadium as they prepare to go back to back. This team has what it takes. They return 90% of their starting roster. With the transfer portal and freshmen coming into this program, it's gonna be very exciting to see what the Fighting Irish do this spring. I had the privilege to get inside access to the Fighting Irish for the next 48 hours. This is what Notre Dame lacrosse is all about this year. Good, contact, good, stop. Reverse, now we're going to our right. Good, you gotta bring it back though. He's gonna roll on you, right? Stick through gloves, contact, get to your strength. Good, stay low. Andrew, keep coming. You're waiting, he's still got five yards on your distance. Close the gap, get contact, we'll slide. Faster, faster, faster. Yo, you gotta be urgent. You gotta have some urgency, come on, let's go. Here we go, let's go. We're not going fast enough, being too nice. Let's go both ways. Yo, challenge today, fellas. Consistency, and can we get back to where we were yesterday when we ended practice, which was pretty damn good. You gotta have the same urgency and intensity. Can you guys get there? I don't see it right now, so that challenge is on you today. Come on. Hey, get that ball from him. Yeah. Don't leave him with a long pole. When you when you don't get the ball from him, now he's in the corner of the field with a long pole on it. Yeah. Good, good. That's it. That's it, Ridge. Good job. That's like the third possession in a row where we've just jammed the ball inside to a guy that we're wishing was open. If he's not open, you can't throw him the ball. That's not the time to take a risk on a feed to the inside, right? Unless it's the end of a quarter, not the end of a, of a shot clock, right? Got to be smarter than that. Yeah. Right, shot three. One, two, three. Hey. I'm Sean Light, number 90, defenseman. I'm Andrew Greenspan, number 15, face-offs. And welcome to our facilities. Uh, this is where we practice every day. Um, it's a lot of fun seeing it on TV growing up. Always wanted to come out to Notre Dame. And now having the chance to play out on this field has just been an incredible experience for me. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been watching legends play on this field for years, and this is somewhere where I've wanted to play for a long time, so being able to play here now is super surreal. People are always out here before practice, kind of just fooling around, getting their sticks ready for practice. Rod over there, he doesn't want to be in the in the camera, but we're going to call him out a little bit. You're the unanimous pick for the best trash talker. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I don't know. I'm not, it's not necessarily something I'm proud of. That's just who I am. Ryder is constantly <laughs> He provides energy for his team, and he's no dummy. He knows what he's doing out there, and he is a spark for those guys and, and kind of gets them all going. Why did you decide to come back and coach? I love this place. I love, you know, coach. I love the effect that this place had on me. I really believe in the program that coach has built here. You know, guys are better for having been a part of our program for four years. I think that's really cool. I think that that is, it's really rewarding for me to be here. We got some uh, older alums over there. You want to yeah. bring, interview yeah. them, ask them questions? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. What's been your favorite uh, experience out on this field? Well, I'll give you my favorite memory on this field is being UNC here in uh, overtime. That was it for the game. We stunned them, so that was pretty good. What's your favorite pregame snack? My favorite pregame snack of those Welch's grape things. Okay. okay. I eat like a yep, hundred nice. of those before you the game. Push How are you feeling about tomorrow? 
Go. Who's winning? Who's winning? You guys just lost to Princeton. Huh? Yeah. How many goals? Oh, a couple. Yeah, a couple. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can head inside now. So now we're going to the locker room. This is where we spend a lot of time. A lot of guys will do homework, watch TV, just get ready. So it's kind of like a sanctuary for all of us. So as you can see, kind of everyone just gathers over by the food, especially. We like to eat over there. Obviously, the TV. Entourage is on 24-7. I don't think I've walked in here once this year and it's not on. I think JT is the reason we watch it. I don't really watch it that much. I just, I'm just kind of hanging out watching film. Right now. Ooh, oh, what do you mean? Fueling station where everyone always is eating. As you can see, RG getting some skinny pop popcorn. What's your go to snack in here? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'd always have one of the different gummies. I have the Bob's and the guys, the Black Forest one. So okay. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit. Saying the uh, Walsh's. We gotta get them all. We got rid of those a couple yeah. years ago. We used to have the Mazzas. Right Mazzas taking over. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's gotta be somewhat Italian. Yeah, it is very Italian. Right? Yeah, he's gotta get the horn going. You want some? Yeah, you want yeah, some yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now? yeah. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> What's your go to snack? Pre practice. Pre practice. Snack, I'll go hummus packs with mm. uh, the pita chips. Pre game snack for you. Go, go, squeeze. Are you kidding me? That's it? Look at all those. What's Coach Corgan rocking pre pre practice mm. pre game? One piece of bread, piece of turkey, piece of cheese, and then fold it in half and box it up. <laughs> really, a one slicer? <laughs> He's a one slicer. Yeah. These are where we keep our cleats, shoes, everything you got. As you can see, we got a lot of stuff over the years. And as you come here, defenders will keep all their holes here. Goalies will keep some of their stuff here. And it's just quick grab and go. So here's mine, grab and go. I'm right out the door, ready for practice, ready to get after it. Past year, Rossberg Master was doing our bagpipes with Brian Tevlin. So every game. Ross and Tevlin let us out in a line playing the bagpipes. And after the guy doing the bagpipes graduates, he'll leave it in someone's locker for the next year. And it's their responsibility to learn it and be prepared to bring us out for the next year. So it's a great tradition, great honor behind it, and uh, just unique to us. What's your favorite Notre Dame tradition? Probably the bagpipes. The bagpipes. Bagpipes. Definitely the walking out behind the bagpipes. It's definitely unique and it always gets the boys fired up. That started with a, a, a kid, Sean Meehan. It started totally within the team. Sean, Sean came out here from Long Island. His family had been playing in the St. Paddy's Day Parade in New York forever and he was a, a very good bagpipe player and the guys found out about it. They had him play at our first game. And ever since then, there's an old VCR tape that he made to teach the other guys how to play the bagpipes. The coolest thing we do when uh, when Ross goes out there, and last year I always had Tevlin as well, uh, going out there and just playing either the regular song we always go out or just any new songs that Tev would bring out for us. It was just, it's always awesome. It brings the juice and gets all the boys really excited. Been a fan of it from afar. I just thought it was really cool. So if you're single, helmet goes up facing to the right. So it's in every locker, gloves on the left, elbow pads on the right. Then chest protector and jersey on the back. Short sticks can leave their sticks on the back. Defenders will put it over there. And then yep. if you're doubled up, you kind of just got to fit more stuff in a smaller space, so. Who's the messiest guy in the locker room? Right now, it looks like TP and Griffin Grant. Looks like they got a lot going on. The lockers with two people tend to get a little more messy. Yeah, a little messy, yeah. Okay. And then the ND logo with the light. It's awesome when these lights are off and it's just the ND logo shining. And if you look up on the uh, boy, the character, culture, community, there's three things we live by. Always want to be embracing every day when we're in here, being with the team, being with the boys, always having a good time. What does character, culture, community mean to this team? Everything. The meaning of it all is is what the individual brings in his own version. Yeah, I think it reminds us daily of who we are and, and who we want to be and, and how grateful we are for the opportunity to be out here running around with you know, Notre Dame lacrosse apparel. We really embody that as a whole. We're representing not only Notre Dame lacrosse, but Notre Dame as a whole. And I think like Coach is big and instilling that mindset in us and just being a team player always and being a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. The bedrock foundation of the program, every single day, I, you know, I think about those and hey, are we living those values to the best of our ability? So, you know, I try to, I try to live it every day. So this teammate of the week box right here, that red little box, it symbolizes like the guy who's kind of putting in the hard work, being a t teammate, because that's something coach and this program, like is, it's really important to us. And it changes every Monday. So it's just the guy who's grinding all week. This is the Loftus field house, and then the Goog, which is where we lift. This is where we spend at least three days a week lifting. This is where if like the weather's bad, which you know, sometimes it gets cold here, there we'll play out here. State of the art facility. It's super nice to be out here. Go inside here. This is where we lift. 
to our nutrition station oh, where we come after the lifts, we get protein yeah. shakes. Yeah. I always take two for after, take a third one to take back to the dorm to always have. Taylor, our nutritionist, right here. <laughs> Peanut butter and yogurt. What's your take on that? We'll go, we'll throw that back in. Peanut here. butter and yogurt, that's a good is that, combo. Is that it something you guys do or is that like, no? Yes, it's solid protein, it's okay. healthy fats, satiety, add some berries there. I mean, I'll trust you on it, but I'm not, I'm not You can even do I'm it not, right now because we no, got this. I'm, I'm good. Perfect. Look at this setup. So you can do yogurt with peanut butter and berries, like I just said. What's your guys' go-to snack in here? On crust. Yeah, on crust. No question. <laughs> Gotta be. Yeah. All right, so this is where we left three times a week. We'll do a lot of medicine ball throws, weighted jumps, more like plyometric stuff on the turf. And then over here is obviously the weight room where there's all the racks. It gets pretty energetic in here. It's really, really, really good environment. This is where I've been going recently. I kind of like it. It's in the corner. Get a view of everyone working hard. Get a look out there, so pretty close to everything. So I really like this rack right Who now. Who brings the most juice on the team? Which player? Probably Christian Gallagher. I think Poland's always got it. Even if he's not having a great day, he's always going to bring it for the team. Yeah. Always gets the boys going. Yeah. All right, so this is where we do a lot of homework. It's called Isbon Auditorium. There's a ton of seats. Football uses it as well. Your go-to spot, where is it? That's where I'm locking in for film. Yeah. No front row dogs, huh? No one sits in the front row besides the coaches. First time we came in here this year, they wanted to keep the same seats they had last year. Okay. Um, so we kind of just filled in spots that Broken. people who left took. Okay. Um, so they try to keep everything. The seats lean back a little bit, and sometimes it's a battle to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really cool room because it has a bunch of the awards that some Notre Dame football players have won over the years that the teams have won. And then over here it has a bunch of Heisman trophies that some of the guys have won over the years. This is just a super cool room that shows a lot about the Notre Dame football and athletic traditions. Favorite part is being like part of the football team at Notre Dame. I hear like from a lot of other teams that the locker room's kind of split and like a lot of the guys don't talk to each other, but it's the exact opposite here. Everyone's like loves each other, loves on each other, and we come together really good as a team. You coming out to any lacrosse games this year? I will. Like when do they start? February 17th. First game. Is that the home? Is that a home? No, it's a way. I don't know, first home. Mandy Merritt. I'm physical therapist and athletic trainer for men's lacrosse and then assist with football. What's the worst part about taping Ronan? Uh, he's always late. Yeah. Oh. He's mm. so late. Yeah, he's always the last guy. Who's the best person to tape? Sean. Pretty easy. Yep. I'm an easy guy. Who's got the best looking feet? Ooh, Dobson. Not I Zeph. Think. We know it's not Zeph. Dobson's got pretty good feet. Carter, what's your favorite part about being taped by Mandy? Getting to talk to Mandy every day. <laughs> Pre-game, Team Dinos are feeling good. Theme of the day is, it's not how you finish, it's how you start. So we're focusing all on the start right now. So we're ready, first whistle. Not as deep in numbers, so we gotta come out first whistle, ready to come out and rock them. Energy all day, effort all day, let's go. I was shot three, one, two, three, iron! Here in South Bend today, we got a USC weekend. Garrett Apple, I play for the Redwoods. Graduated from Notre Dame in 2017. Excited to be here. What's up, guys? Eddie Glazner, I play for the Redwoods. Uh, play defense, graduated in 2016. Tim Troutner, graduated from High Point University. Goalie for the Redwoods. TD Erland, graduated from Yale in 2020, and I play for the Redwoods. Ty Montgomery, graduated from Duke in 2022. <laughs> and I play for the Redwoods, and this campus is almost as nice as Duke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's get going on tour. What's the first memory? getting to campus campus memory you guys have any one of my favorite memories is what's called Zom house a little infamous dorm I met Eddie there we're listening to ASAP Rocky yeah <laughs> this was like 2012 2012 yeah your window and play the music so everyone has to listen to your music uh, this is Soren oldest dorm on campus a lot of the inside has been redone but you can tell by like the yellowing brick it's one of the older buildings here we're sort of in like the oldest part of campus right now main building Basilica Soren yeah it's just the oldest part it's where the the first building were. Sweet. Scan it on in. What do we, what do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a new this setup. is all uh, built in the last like, year. It looks nice. There's two lakes. 
uh, at the other one that people, especially in summer school. Were you one of those kids? I went to summer school. Yeah, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> GPA booster. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> this is a grotto. Great place to come. Say a prayer. Light a candle for uh, somebody that you're thinking about. This is by far my favorite spot on campus. Kind of a fun fact, when we played here this spring, me and my guy Hoagie got the opportunity to walk campus. We came here, one of my most memorable moments with him was we came here and we said a prayer. And I just think, you know, there was so much clarity in being present at that moment that I'll never forget that moment. And this is a huge monumental spot for the school of Notre Dame. The tradition here is to come here, light a candle and say a prayer. And I think obviously this being a Catholic and private school, it's very spot on. The best eating here in Notre Dame, you got Taco Bell. People tend to congregate there late. What was your go-to? Taco 12 pack, <laughs> Cool Ranch Doritos, Cheesy Gordita Crunch with the Baja Blast Mountain Dew. Maybe a cheese pizza. There's a tour guide over there. It says biggest university library in the country. Do you guys have any fond memories of studying in this library back in the day? <laughs> I spent some time in there for yeah. sure. It's a good library. Got a good setup. Kind it's, of a social scene there. It is a social scene. Like people Total are, social. You, scene. Yeah, yeah, you're not getting them. you're not getting a lot of work. If someone on. tells you they're going to the library to study, they're lying. Touchdown, Jesus. First time seeing this in person? It is the first time. It is bigger first than I thought. Yeah, first time. What do you think? Pretty cool. Dad was a diehard Notre Dame fan, so it's just it's pretty cool. What is the story about Touchdown Jesus? Uh, well, I don't know the story about Touchdown Jesus, but the writer of Shrek went here. And he lived in South Quad. Lord Farquad, like, vaguely resembles one of these guys on the mural up there. One of the best things for me about coming to Notre Dame was the football weekend. So it's pretty cool, especially the atmosphere on every single football game is, is like this, and it really makes it special to go. team came out to watch you guys play against CBA. How cool was that? That was awesome. I mean, it was a cold, cold day out here, but they just start walking down the field over there. And I mean, a bunch of them were shirtless. They're all wearing their spandex. It was really funny. It wasn't a beautiful day or anything. So those guys coming out and adding some life to the crowd and, and, and everything. I wish they'd have stayed because I think we lost a little life when they when they left. I thought that was really cool. We have a pretty good relationship with them. Obviously, they, they practice right next door and they just they walked over and I just loved how much energy they brought. It was super cool to see because I know we get we get wild for their games and go crazy in the stands as well. So seeing them out there, even though I bet a bunch of them probably don't even know exactly what was going on here, and hearing them yell from the sideline and on the berm was, was super cool. Oh, oh. 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 is this a usual thing for you guys after practice? Yeah, try to as much as we can. Especially on a light day like today. This one's gonna be top corner, right for you. Oh no, nope. you can cut that. You can cut that. <laughs> What's, up? Oh. <laughs> What's, up? What's up, guys? Eric Dobson, number eight on the Notre Dame men's lacrosse team here. Hey guys, I'm Carter Parlett, number 21 on the men's lacrosse team. Welcome to our house here at Notre Dame. You spent three years on campus, so we're seniors and finally living here off campus. Welcome to our house tour. Call this house the How, uh, H A U. We have a couple of artifacts here. These are Carter's game cleats that he wears on grass, so that was handy for whenever he needs to do an Oklahoma drill in the front yard. <laughs> House just got redid uh, last year. You know, super nice, put in new floors, do new decals everywhere. Uh, but this is kind of the, the main entrance. We got a, a big room right here. A bunch of activities going on. Seven guys live here, and there's no rooms on the first floor. When you host a, a tournament, a tournament game, they hang these up all around the place, and so you can kind of steal them and hang them up in your house. Another, another poster over there. This is like our, our like kitchen. Who's the messiest cook in the house? Probably not someone that lives here. Uh, Colin Hagstrom lives across the street. He tends to either set off a fire alarm or last time he left his T-bone steak on the on the front porch. We but got some good raccoon friends from that T-bone steak. So. Absolutely. <laughs> this is one of our tables. Here's another one. This is a table that's been like in the Notre Dame lacrosse family for a long time. Someone's dad made it like 10 or 15 years ago and it's just been passed down and it's really sturdy. It's uh, really good to get the guys together, you know, for team dinners, whatever it is, kind of, you know, sit around the table and chop it up. This is our, uh, our back porch. We got our grill here. The grill. Yeah. 
Conrad Delgado whips up some burgers on the grill for us. Kind of getting in the kitchen now. Um, you know, guys before classes got to fuel up. A lot of guys cook eggs, bacon, uh, whatever it is. Just make some breakfast burritos. Obviously, we got a lot of guys in here, so we got two full-size fridges. A lot of drawers with, with nothing in them. Yeah. So Back here is kind of like our sunroom. You can see out to our shared backyard. See a couple couches out there. Usually, we'll put a, a TV like right here outside, and then guys will come over and watch football and, and do whatever. Usually, start a fire if it's a little bit chilly, and it's a good time. We got a big old TV upstairs that we can bring down here. This is kind of what the old floor used to look like all over the place. They didn't replace the stairs and they redid the place. <laughs> <laughs> is this the room? Give us, our, give us a tour. Yeah. All right, this is my room. I was fortunate enough to get the second best room. You know, I got some pictures of the guys. Notre Dame's a big spot to make good connections, and we have a great culture on this team. And, you know, I've made connections that'll last a lifetime. This is Bryce Walker's room. We'll probably kill us that it's this messy, but. Is this uh, the norm? No, him? he just has a lot of stuff. We got the, the pretty pretty similar helmet arrangement to a couple. What's of your guys' favorite helmet? Honestly, the uh, the ones that we got last year that are the the gold with the white on them. It's just classic, and I think the white looked a lot better than the black on there. Standard bathroom. We got his and hers uh, sinks, which is nice in the morning. You know, guys are trying to get to class. It's like the the fourth pick room. This is Jack Conroy's room. That's Very plain. Yeah. No, uh, no, nothing on the walls. No. Yeah, I guess he's a simple man, except for his. It's a nice fan there, so. <laughs> so this is the chill room. We like, uh, you know, getting all the guys together. It's nice having a spot where we can all hang out. Uh, we come in here on Sundays a lot. You know, yep. probably should be getting some homework done, but we watch a lot of football. I'm Fulton Bayman. I'm Rich Johnson. I'm Jack Conroy. All seniors who live in the house, again, you know, just hanging out. Messiest guy in the house, we'll start with Fulton. Messiest guy in the house. Probably myself. <laughs> <laughs> Ross. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sneaky. Ross. Sneaky. I'm changing Ross. my answer. It's Ross. Why is it Ross? Ross similarly has the problem of having a lot of clothes, just and it's just everywhere. He lives yeah. in a dungeon downstairs, so yeah. he's not yeah. Yeah. I'm going with Fulton. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, mm. That's, fair. that's a good that's answer, Steve. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> this coffee table here has been in the Notre Dame family a while. There's a bunch of guys that have signed their uh, their names into it. Three of us live down here. Uh, Ross Bergmaster, myself, and Fulton Bayman. This is Ross's room. I guess kind of contrary to what the other guys said, it doesn't look that messy to me, but... You know, it has its days. Ross the bagpiper, obviously. Got a cool poster up there of, of yeah. him running out. Uh, we would have been, what, sophomores then? Yeah. Pretty cool tradition that, you know, Ross got the honor of, of doing. Is he any good at it? We'll see. <laughs> this is Fulton's room. Can't get him there right now. Here's the bathroom. Probably the cleanest it's looked all year, but not bad. Not sure why this is clogged up there. Yeah. Oh, we'll figure that out later. Yeah, something going on yeah. Here, yeah. Not much space down here, so this is Fulton's extra lacrosse gear. Some uh, Hamburg Warriors lacrosse gloves. Brian's. Yeah. I haven't seen those boys in a while. What are those white cleats right there? No, I don't think I've ever seen anyone wear these, but they, they're still around somewhere. And then these are some other ones. This is my room. Same helmet setup as the other guys here. Yeah. This is what you get with the last pick, but you know, it's not too bad. On the upside, it's extremely dark and extremely cold down here, so it's perfect for sleeping. And if anyone ever gets mad, and annoying, and I can just shut off the power to their room wow. too. So look at that. A little bit of power down here. We got the closet right here. Let's say it's date night for Dobby. Oh. What are we rocking? Classic purple. Interesting, uh, with the pocket. Yeah, pocket, a little bit extra utility for you there. Yeah, interesting. In case, what in case what are we putting in there? Pens, anything. Yeah. anything. Signed an autograph, yeah, Sharpies. Not bad, but uh. <laughs> We're just gonna take you inside. We're in Deep Arch Little Hall. We have Italian 101. Let's get after it. I'm Mia Giovanata in Italiano. I do a gioco lacrosse e vado in palestra con mi amici. Questo è il papà di Tomas. Grazie. When the game ended uh, and you were crowned champions, you know, what was that feeling like for you? Great kind of contentment that that, that, that group had, had kind of achieved everything they, they wanted, you know, and had gotten everything they wanted. It was great to be able to, to, to see our guys celebrate that moment. It was unreal just to see everything come to fruition and all the support of the alumni too. It was like, there's so many people there and like so many people that wanted to, that have been a part of this culture and part of this team. And, 
that have uh, you know contributed a ton to it. So just a winner for them and for Coach Corgan as well. And then obviously all your brothers by your side. That was the biggest thing. You know, I committed here 11 years ago now, and that's been like the single goal at the top of the to-do list. To know we're going to be in, in the history books for the rest of our life and beyond is is pretty surreal. It was one of the best days of my life. You can't even put into perspective or words for people who don't understand it. The alumni feeling like they won it as well, just them coming up to us after the game, just like the thank yous, the like, you guys did this. Like, it felt like we did something for 30 generations of Notre Dame lacrosse players. Notre Dame lacrosse go back to back? Yes, okay. for sure. Mark my words. <laughs> <laughs> that's the plan. Obviously not, don't want to say no. Not going to say no, but that's the goal. We just we need to put pieces together, make sure we have the best versions of all of ourselves, all 57 deep, showing up every day, working and buying in. Yeah, I think if there's a group that's going to do it, it's a group that's tasted what it feels like to do it and knows how hard it is to do it, but that the reward at the end is absolutely worth it a thousand times over. I hope, you know, we'll see, you know, every single year you're trying to go all the way. But, you know, we don't, we don't look at that, we don't talk about championships, we don't talk about, you know, winning that game. We, we just simply, we want to have a good practice today. We can. We have the ability to continue to get better every day and we work hard, then we'll give ourselves a shot to be there. Long way to go between now and then, though, for sure. But yeah, we got the pieces. Man, it's going to be tough. I certainly feel like we have the makings of a team that could. But it's going to take a lot of work and effort, and you know we need to recenter ourselves and reset. And I think we're off and running in that regard. But it's going to be a tough mountain to climb. <laughs> you know, we got practice at four o'clock today, and I'm hoping we can get out there and, and be better today than we were yesterday. Let's put it this way: I never played a game in my life, I never coached a game in my life that I didn't want to win. Championship this year. You know what? I'm going to take Notre Dame to do it. I'm going to take Notre Dame to be super pissed. They didn't actually make the tournament last year.